Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back, friends. Welcome to another video lecture by Kami Biology. In this video lecture, we are going to talk about intracellular digestion and exocytosis. Okay. In the previous video lecture, if you guys remember, we talked the toll-like receptor, which is actually the part of uh, phagocytosis. Okay. You know, we start the phagocytosis lecture from the overview. And now this is the last video lecture which is regarded with the phagocytosis and which is actually the part of I mean knowledge lectures. Okay, so in this last video what we are going to talk about, we are going to talk about intracellular digestion and we are going to talk about exocytosis. Okay, now when the bacteria are engulfed, let's suppose not only bacteria, let's say any microorganisms when it is engulfed, then after that what actually happen? After that intracellular digestion happen means the cells which are engulfed these cells are digested how it is digested we'll be talking in this video lecture in a detail so let us explain so let me write uh, So what actually happened in intracellular digestion, let's say this is again the, you know, macrophage, let's say, macrophage or let's say it is any kind of the uh, amino cells, let's say, okay, and uh, this is, you know, whenever, uh, keep one thing in your mind, whenever this phagocytes, uh, engulf the bacteria, engulf any kind of the microorganism, then they make a phagosomes, vesicle or endosomes. So what actually they make, let's suppose this is a bacterial species. Now this bacterial species are get engulfed by these phagocytes. So then a phagosomes are formed. So let me draw phagosomes. Now this is the membrane. This is the membrane part of the what? This is the membrane part of this, this phagocytes. And this is the microorganisms which are engulfed. After that, what actually happened? After that, this uh, phagosomes, vesicle or endosomes, are migrated and connected or fused with another uh, organelles which we usually call that lysosomes. So they are then fused with the lysosomes. Okay. Now, after that, what actually happened? A complex is formed, which we call that phagolysosome. So let me draw again. Then after that, what actually happened? A complex is formed. So again, this is, you know, macrophage or dendritic cell or any phagocytes. So this is, you know, the endosomes. Now let's say these endosomes are fused with what? This is fused with this lysosomes. Now this is the complex. This is the phagosomes and this is the lysosomes. So both are fused with each other and it make a complex which we usually call that phagolysosomes. So once the phagolysosomes are formed then what actually happen after that? After that there are different kinds of enzymes are present in each lysozymes. Okay, I already explained the lysozymes, the structure, the function, the chemicals which are present in the lysozymes in much more detail. It is present into my channel. You, you can just watch it. Now, these lysosomes contain different kinds of degradative enzymes. So, what kind of enzymes they contain? They contain oxygen-dependent enzyme and oxygen and dependent enzyme so what are the oxygen uh, dependent which are the oxygen dependent and which are the oxygen and dependent enzyme so let me write the name they contain means they contain different kinds of enzyme okay so they contain first of all let me write first of all i paste they contain protease hydro Less D oxy lysozyme zymes. Okay, so all these are what all these are the oxygen and dependent because they don't have oxygen. Okay, now then they also contain oxygen 
a dependent, uh, you know, uh, enzyme. So let me write oxygen dependent enzymes. They contain hydrogen peroxide, super radical, super radical, hydroxyl ions, and singlet oxygen. Okay. Now, what are the function of each enzyme? So let me explain. Now, these are the oxygen independent. Uh, sorry, these are the oxygen dependent enzyme and these are the oxygen independent enzyme. This phospholipase enzymes once produced so they can cause the destruction of the phospholipids which are present on the bacterial cell. They produce protease which have the ability to break down the proteins molecules. Okay, the protein molecules which make the bacterial cell membrane which make any kind of the bacterial component so they can uh, break down th uh, these proteins. They also produce this hydrolase that can break down the hydrogen and oxygen molecule. They produce this deoxyribonuclease that can break down the, you know, uh, DNA. They also produce this lysosomes. Moreover, they produce this hydrogen peroxides. Uh, sorry, this is H2O2. Hydrogen peroxides, uh, super, uh, super, super, super oxide. This is sorry. This is what this is. Super oxide, super oxide superoxide radical okay and all these uh, now this one you know enzymes what are the function of these are not actually enzyme but these are you know a very strong uh, uh, reactive oxygen intermediate these are what these are actually reactive oxygen intermediate reactive oxygen intermediates okay now what are the action of these oxygen uh, reactive oxygen intermediates once these kinds of molecules are released from the lysosomes then they can receive the energy in the form of NADPH and ATP and NADPH which are what which are the energy currency energy currency we can also say that due to this kinds of uh, molecules, uh, cellular respiration are happen. Okay. Not only that, uh, this you know enzymes with the presence of this lysosomes uh, inside the uh, phagocytes, uh, they can also produce. So they can also produce reactive nitrogen intermediate. So let me draw again. Let me just draw the phagolysosomes. Okay. Let's say this is our bacterial cell. Now, this bacterial cell are then converted into small fragment. These are the bacterial cell or any microorganisms which are then converted into small fragments. Okay, they produce what this lysosomes also produce another, you know, uh, uh, molecules which we usually call that RNIS. Reactive nitrogen intermediates. This reactive nitrogen intermediate contain nitrogen oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and nitrogen trioxide. Okay, now what are the action of these molecules? These molecules are very effective and they have, you know, high toxic uh, ability. Once each molecule, uh, you know, each molecules are usually present in the vacuoles. Vacuoles. Form vacuoles, each molecules are then shifted to the this lysosomes. So the action of each enzymes they can cause the destructions of uh, we can say that uh, tumor cells. Okay, they can cause the destruction of the tumor cell. They can cause the killing of the tumor cells. So they can cause killing of tumor cells. These kinds of, uh, you know, molecules can cause the destruction of uh, different kinds of uh, cells, uh, which we usually call that, uh, let me write the name of each cell. Uh, they can cause the destruction of protozoa, which we call that toxo, toxo, plasma, gondii. Try to remove the spelling mistake by yourself. They can also cause the destruction of uh, Lashmenia, Lashmenia. 
Now these are what these are the protozoa. They can also cause the destruction of the virus, especially herpes simplex virus. Herpes simplex virus. And they can also cause the destruction of the special fungi, which we usually call that cryptococcus. Cryptococcus new formants. So these kinds of the species or these kinds of the microorganisms are destroyed by the release of each reactive nitrogen intermediates molecule. So you know each kinds of the molecules are usually released from a special phagocyte which we usually call that uh, macrophages. So it is usually released from the macrophages. It is released from the neutrophils. Neutrophils mast cell mast cells so these are the phagocytes that can produce this one uh, molecules or reactive nitrogen uh, intermediate molecules okay now after that once each microorganisms are converted into small fragment are converted into small pieces then energy is also received due to these uh, reactive oxygen intermediates once the energy is received then what actually happen these cells sometimes they will you know produce or they can make a molecule which we usually call it MHC2 molecules so then after that you know these cells can make the MHC2 molecules so on the surface of each cell a molecules are formed or a receptor are formed which we usually call it MHC2 molecules MHC2 now each MHC2 molecules can expresses the fragments of the bacteria or the fragment or fragments of any uh, uh, microorganisms to the rest of the immuno cells okay then other immuno cells are reached to that specific area now sometimes they will presenting this uh, antigen uh, fragments to the MHC2 molecules. Inshallah, I will explain MHC1, MHC2 molecule in some other video lecture. Okay, just here you consider that it is, you know, receptor molecules. Once they are presenting, then other cells are reached. Sometimes, what actually happen? This one, you know, uh, complex, reach to the plasma membrane area, and from the plasma membrane area, they are fused. They are fused and burst, and then they release the debris. Let's suppose they, uh, they are, here are the these are the antigenic particles or these are the fragments of the microorganisms then the microorganism fragments are released out from each of the cells so sometimes this one phenomena occur means the fragments are released out. or sometimes you know each fragments are expressed to this msc2 molecules now let's say once the fragments are expressed to this msc2 molecule then different kinds of they not only you know present each of the fragment they also produce uh, you know different kinds of the chemicals uh, interleukin interferon uh, which we call that chemokines they will produce chemokines due to chemokines uh, different cells are you know reached to this specific area neutrophils monocytes they are squeezed and they are reached to that specific area where the infection are occur. So a lot of the cells are reached to that specific area, I mean that specific tissue area. And we can say that innate immune systems are activated. After that, once innate immune systems are activated, then after that, a specific immunities are activated. So then the immunity process are activated and activated. And what actually happened? Vasodilation are happen means the vessel are dilated. Once the vessels are dilated, then that specific area of the body, let's suppose that specific area of the body where the wounds are formed, means at that tissue there are the swelling. Means at that specific area the swelling are happen. The swelling is due to the vasodilation and the increased number of the amino cells moreover they can also generate heat okay so heat is also generated heat is also generated moreover there are the nerve tissue and nerve cells are also present at that specific area which are destroyed and which are you know killed uh, which are usually destroyed due to which a pain is you know also created moreover a pus is also formed on that specific area 
which represents the death of neutrophil and macro uh, neutrophil monocyte or usually bacterial cells okay means then a pus are formed moreover it will also you know uh, represents a redness mean that specific area will be uh, red so what actually happen redness so what do you think what actually these uh, the septums these septums what repre uh, what represents each of the septums means swelling are happening redness are happening heat are happening pain are happening these four characteristics not only these four some other characteristics are also happen but these four main characteristics are happening when each of the process are uh, present inside our brain each of the process are you know proceed or when each of the process are start or happening inside our body then due to this way these septums are activated as i explained so what do you think so what do you think what represents each septums so each substance are usually represent the inflammation or we can say these are the main characteristics of inflammations okay so we can say actually the inflammation are happen so remember one thing when the inflammation at the specific area are happen then you will recall that actually these processes are happen inside our body that's why the inflammation are happen okay inshallah in next video lecture we are explaining the inflammation in much more detail okay so that's all about the phagocytosis phenomena in a detail that's you know uh, when the cells are debris are released out then we call that exocytosis okay so we also explain what we also explain the ex exocytosis exocytosis okay so in exocytosis let me once again tell you in exocytosis the complex phagolysosomes complex reach to the cell membrane and they are burst to that area and release the debris which we call that exocytosis okay so that's all about the phagocytosis in a detail and that's you know the lecture of intracellular digestion and exocytosis i hope you understand about the phagocytosis if there is any point missing so you can write it into a comment inshallah i will explain it and if you have any kind of question you can also write it into a comment okay inshallah we will give you answer as soon as possible if you like this video so please hit the like button share this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel okay subscribe the channel to get more interesting videos like that thank you so much for watching